So good morning uh, students, today's topic of discussion is going to be why patients vary in response to drug. I can take it otherwise as is response to drug inherited or what. That's the outline for my class. It talks about clinical cases, uh, relationship of genes with kinetic and dynamic processes, guidelines for use of drug as far as genetics is concerned, genetic testing which is approved by the FDA as far as drug response is concerned, ethical consideration in genetics and other factors which affect drug variation. So having said this, the case number one is about a 30 year old male visiting a clinic for severe toothache diagnosed with dental caries and was administered paracetamol and codeine both happened to be their drugs uh, painkiller drugs but after a few hours few hours the patient complained of inadequate pain relief why is the question and there are a lot of possibilities we'll see in the lecture the case number two talks about a patient with leukemia that's blood cancer receiving mercaptopurine developed excessive myelosuppression that is bone marrow suppression uh, producing a lot less of uh, WBCs and RBCs and because of which the mercaptopurine dose has to be reduced and the response achieved was partial. Now why it should happen and uh, why is this happening we need to see uh, in the lecture. Now the expectation is that uh, no one drug fits all but in a uh, clinical presentation in a standard setting we use same drug and what we observe is that one drug does not fit all. We get kind of three responses, people who respond adequately to drugs, people who, inadequ people who show inadequate response to a drug or people who show excessive side effect because of the drug. Now why it should happen, it comes down to one statement as that each one of us is unique and that's why we vary in our drug response um, and why, why are we all unique? The answer lies maybe in our genes. So if you look at this uh, entire population, the majority of the people will be normal responding, but the minority of population will show no response or will show toxic drug response. Now that is happening because we are having polymorphism when it comes to the genes. That is that we have gene mutations that are carried on and that give rise to uh, normal proteins and that in turn affect uh, how drug response uh, occurs in the body differently. So when it comes to uh, patient's response to a drug that is depending upon a genetic makeup because genes decide uh, a lot on what is going to be the protein synthesis and the main targets when it comes to drug efficacy and toxicity are changes in enzyme transporter proteins and receptors. As far as kinetic processes are concerned changes in transporter and enzyme activity are the ones that we are looking at and the changes that occur because of genetic mutations in them. When it comes to dynamic process we are talking in changes of receptor affinity and maybe structure and that giving rise to differences in drug response and uh, the primary uh, thing that is going wrong maybe is in the genes and that's why there is an issue with these things. So when it comes to a case number one, uh, first understand that codeine has to get converted to morphine and this entire process is uh, you know uh, helped by an enzyme called a CYP2T6 that happens to be in the liver. The liver is an organ that acts as an organ which is kind of organ which metabolizes most of the things coming from the GIT so it's called as the, uh, the process is called as the first pass metabolism and any changes in the gene that is encoding this enzyme CYP2T6 affects uh, the activity of this enzyme either it's more of activity or less of activity maybe in the case that we have seen in the case number one is uh, less of activity because of genetic mutation that uh, did arise and the codeine was not converted into morphine giving rise to high levels of codeine and not morphine because morphine is required for the pain to go down and not codeine and that's why patient did get uh, inadequate pain relief so that is the conversion that we are looking at and that did not happen because of which the patient developed a lot of problems with the pain. The second example is of 6 mercaptopurin getting uh, transferred to 6 methyl mercaptopurin that is important and this is a metabolic pathway which is catalyzed by enzyme called as TPMT that is thiopurin S methyl transferase and genetic mutations encoding variations in this TPMT can give rise to either increase or decrease activity. In uh, our case, the case number 2 discussion, this activity was decreased so levels of 6 mercaptopurin did increase and giving rise to excessive myelosuppression in the individual. A genetic testing is a must nowadays for TPMT before you start any patient on 6 mercaptopurin. So having said this, we can then divide the population into something called as ultra rapid metabolizers which metabolize uh, the drug on a, uh, on a faster rate 
because of the genetic mutations and these are the people who will require the dose uh, to be on higher side uh, they might also lead to a lot of uh, toxic uh, effects because they take, tend to take these drugs uh, often and that might lead to even a dependence on these uh, drugs then the majority of population is an extensive metabolizers i mean the usual ones which are uh, fit for taking the normal dose and the normal drug then we have intermediate and the poor metabolizers which have problems in the genes which do not uh, then encode proteins that do not uh, or enzymes that have reduced activity and then give rise to uh, what I call it as uh, less uh, transformation uh, occurring uh, um, I mean for the drug, the less metabolism occurring for the drug and giving rise to high levels of drug and in these patients usually the drug should be avoided. Uh, of course, there are ethical issues and consideration and education things. Uh, ethical issues when it comes to genetics is about uh, you know, collection of samples and keeping it for a long time and the confidentiality which is uh, supposed to be there once the data is uh, with uh, the service provider. So that becomes a big issue of who will collect it and how to keep it and whether it will be misused for future and so on. Of course, education of this genetic issue should be there for the future healthcare professionals and the public awareness should be done about this. Uh, of course, these are few the drugs uh, which are commonly used. Warfarin is an uh, anticoagulant, it is a blood thin agent, and we test the gene uh, for <coughs> knowing the dose of warfarin. Clopidogrel uh, is an antiplatelet agent, that's also a blood thinning agent can use a gene to test whether it will suit and what dose should be given to the individual. Mercaptopirin, I want to give you to you. Now, uh, these are all the factors which affect variations in drug response. We have the food, of course, presence or absence of food affects the levels of uh, drug in the blood and that's why giving us a lot of variation. Compliance to treatment, patients should take the drug, otherwise there will be a lot of issues. Uh, if they don't take, there is no drug response. Uh, pregnancy is, of course, an issue because pregnancy itself will bring about fluid overload in the body, a lot of hormonal changes and that can give rise to drugs which behave slightly differently in a pregnant individual as compared to a non-pregnant. Uh, lady. Genetics we already talked about. Then we have substances of addiction like smoking and alcohol which can induce enzymes and can give rise to uh, conditions where you require higher doses of drugs. Uh, diseases of the liver, kidneys and heart might affect the general status of the body giving rise to variation in drug response. Uh, people uh, have differences in gender, age and body weight will differ in their response to drug or will require different doses or different drugs to be effective. So you can use this as a mind map in the future to know about uh, pharmacogenetics in general. Uh, the conclusion is that must, uh, still much is to be learned. It requires a shift in clinicians at treatment and daily, not one drug and dose fits all. So the, you require to know this uh, without which it is very difficult to understand this concept. Uh, it was by William Osweller who said that in the variations in drug response uh, makes medicine uh, uh, hard and uh, otherwise it would have been just be a science. And goals of personal medicine happens to be the right drug. That's very important, right? That is what we are talking of. Right dose, that's what we talked of. Right indication, right patient, right time. Now these all fit, I mean, the variation in drug response, when you look at this, it fits into most of these things uh, when it comes to uh, what is personalized medication. Now that's for the future, here is my sequence. Uh, that's just for you to understand things in a much better way uh, and uh, that's my question for the week. The answer for this will be provided on the e-learning portal within seven days. Uh, and that's the resources. Uh,